All right, this video is for basic editing skills in Photoshop. So I am going to just show you around Photoshop and I would like you to know where some of these basic things are in the vocabulary of Photoshop. It'll make your life a lot easier and it's a lot of fun. It's a great program. So for starters, uh, let's just start out now with our, our basic uh, you know, logistics. So what we have is this is your toolbar. So you know you can grab it on that little thing right there and move it around. If you prefer it to be like this, you may do that as well. So and that little arrow allows you to make that um, bigger or smaller. Uh, let's see. Another thing that we I currently have my layers up. If you see a whole bunch of other stuff here, just realize that you can collapse these and make them smaller uh, and you can also combine them. So for instance, if you want your, you have your image adjustments out, for instance, and you want to combine your layers with them, you can do that and then you can make this smaller and you can use it like that. Um, anytime you can always right click and close things. So. Uh, I am going to recommend that you keep your desktop pretty cleaned up. Um, you likely really won't need your adjustment layers. Um, in fact, I really at this point in time don't recommend using these. I mean, I'll show you why in a second. Um, I do recommend using your layer so and where you can find your layer. So let's just pretend you don't know where they are. They disappeared. You can always go up to window and down to layers. All right. Uh, the next thing is your options bar. So whenever you click on a tool, options will come up. If you do not see your options for some reason, you can always go to window and make sure that your options are showing. All right, so uh, basic, basic tools. Okay, so uh, we've got some basic tools. One of the most basic tools is your crop tool. Your crop tool is really important. Um, this is a, a typical photograph in that it is uh, really poorly composed and it's really um, could be drastically improved by the crop tool. So when you are using the crop tool, there are preset sizes and I highly recommend that you don't just crop randomly all the time. Sometimes you're gonna wanna do that, but most of the time you're gonna wanna use this setting, eight and a half by 11 inches and 300 points per inch. Uh, the reason for that is, is that's the size of your paper. So a cool thing about this is you don't have to type it in that way and if you want to make it horizontal which i do want you to do in this case so um i am gonna want you to turn this tutorial in to prove to me that you know how to use your crop tool um and i would like you to make sure that you know that you can grab it if you go off to the side like this and a color um goes inside of there that's because that's your background color and it's filling with that you generally don't want to do that so you want to make sure that the bounding box is around the image. Bring this down. Don't cut off anything that accents the photograph in this ugly gray area in this particular situation should be cropped off. Not all the way to the edge, but a lot of it. And then I'm going to ask you to bring this in and use the rule of thirds right in the area of Nico's eye. So something like that. Realize again that you can switch this back and forth, but in this case, I prefer to make this horizontal. Okay, so you can either hit the check mark or you can hit the enter key and it will successfully crop your image. So the next one I'd like to go down to is your zoom tool. Your zoom tool allows you, if you use your uh, roller, if you're here in class, um, it should be preset that you can do that. And uh, another cool thing about this is let's just pretend you have decided to go really, really big, but you need to move around. So if you hold down your space key, that allows you to access your hand. Your hand basically just moves things around. You can also access your hand on your 
toolbar, and that will let you move things around. And then you can also unzoom. So uh, uh, the first thing we are going to do now is we are going to take out this pink mark. There's a variety of different things that you can do to do that. Um, probably the easiest way is using your Band-Aid tools. These Band-Aid tools, there's a lot of them, uh, work really well. I'm going to go over two today. Spot healing is the really most basic one. And how you can change your spot healing brush and all tools is up in the options bar. So from here, you can change the hardness. And in this case, I recommend that you keep the hardness really low. What that means is um, the edges will be very, very soft. So as you're clicking, your edges will be very, very soft um, versus if they were hard, I'm not sure this is going to demonstrate very well. Um, it'll make a real hard edge. So um, when you're trying to blend things, you want soft edges. So in this case, keep your edges soft. Uh, also, you can access your um, size here as well. Um, another way of doing that is to right click. You can access the same menu. And the really easy way is with your keyboard, you can change the size of your tool with your square bracket keys right on your keyboard. That is my preferred method. So this will uh, allow you to go ahead and kind of click and click and click and click. I don't find this terribly efficient. Um, I am much quicker using other tools, but this works really good for like little things like spots and zits and tiny little areas that you want to take out. You don't have a whole lot of control with this because basically Photoshop is just, just making all the decisions for you. All right, so another better tool in this situation will be the healing brush tool. Here you have a little bit more control. And in this case, you need to Alt and then click. And that defines that that's your source point. And the next time you click, you will see the plus mark. And you should know that now this tool is accessing where that plus mark is and covering those pixels up with that. So as you can see, that is not really working all that great either. Um, so um, again, this, this will work okay uh, in certain areas where it, you know, it, it's not a terrible tool. It's just not my favorite tool. My favorite tool is the clone tool. And this one's kind of old school. Um, my career started out using the clone tool. So the way the clone tool works is similar. There's just a little more variety. So this one, you alt click, and then the next time you click, that will define that source point, and then that source point will move around with you. So you can see that it's staying in the same position. If you want to change that position, you alt click again, it goes into record mode, and then it'll take from that area. So if you get good hand-eye coordination, so I'm alt clicking a lot, uh, you can get quite good at this and you can take out nearly anything. Um, I prefer this method much more. So that is how you do that. You can go ahead and pause this video if you need to catch up. Um, I'm going to continue on very quickly and take out this other mark. And as you can see, you can be quite efficient and that's kind of the point here. Um, when you have a job if for a photography studio or a graphic design studio, or um, you don't have a ton of time, um, and they are going to want you to work quickly and efficiently, um, which is the point of me showing you how to do this. So, um, so I'm done. So I'm going to double click on the hand. That's another happy little shortcut. It'll bring everything back to life. Okay. The next little introduction here is that uh, image and then adjustments and brightness and contrast. So that's the next thing that I want you to do. I'm gonna to try to keep this video short because I'm already at nine minutes. And I'm gonna add a little bit of brightness and a little bit of contrast, not too much. I want a good distribution of blacks, grays, and whites. That's why I use this adorable black and white cat. You can always check your preview, kind of dull and boring, came to life. Say, okay. And that will pretty much do it for this particular uh, 
a tutorial. So I would like you to master just those things for this first one. I am going to ask you to file save as and then put this in the two photo second semester thing as you can see, but I need you to make sure that you use your last name in front of it and then say save. Alrighty, you always want to max out on your JPEG quality, so you always want to crank that to 12 to ensure that you have as many pixels on your images as possible and say, okay.